by day and trouble by trouble. Paul saw every difficulty as an opportunity to mature in the faith. What does it matter if the outward person is perishing so long as the inward person is experiencing daily spiritual renewal? Paul right here in this particular text was not suggesting that the body is is not important, no, 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 or that we should ignore the warnings and the needs. Since our bodies, he wrote this as well, are, are temples of God, and we must care for them. We, we cannot control the, the natural deterioration or the human nature, or even, if you will, what we're going through today in this pandemic and COVID-19, all we can do is pray, protect ourselves, take care of our body, eat right, sleep right, rest, try to eat right, amen, keep our distance, to do our best to keep it healthy. Y'all can say amen. You can't control the great hairs you get, whether they're in your beard or the hair that you lose, amen, your feet hurting, the arthritis, amen, the, the back, amen, what, whatever's going on, the elbows, what, whatever's going on with your, with, with, with your physical body, we, we, we live by faith in Christ. And you get, that, you get that right perspective of suffering when you live by faith in Christ. Because several scriptures in the Bible, amen, from Habakkuk and Romans, it tells us the just shall live by faith. But note the contrast that Paul presented in 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Three things it speaks about as we concentrate more on verse 17. It speaks of the difficulty, if you write it down, the duration and the dividends of our afflictions. The difficulty, number one, the duration, amen, that's the time and the, amen, uh, and the dividends. That's the uh, reward, basically. That's what you, you capture at the end of it, what's, what's going to be granted to you. First of all, first of all, the difficulty. It says our light affliction. Paul describes the difficulties, our afflictions in terms of weight and says that they are light. And we are surprised that Paul says his afflictions were light. Paul, of all people. For he expressed some very, he experienced and he's expressing uh, this because he experienced some very tough times and uh, for uh, 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 in his life for the faith. For example, he was sown and left the half dead. Amen. Exodus chapter, I mean, excuse me, Acts chapter 14. And he was also beaten and thrown in prison, Acts chapter 16, verse 23. That's just only two occasions. But yet, he counted these afflictions as light in view of Eternal. Eternity. Eternity. If Paul could count his affliction as light, how much more should we look upon our trials and afflictions as light? Stay with me. We're going down the road. And that's difficult. Difficult time, hard trouble, amen, heaviness, amen, amen. But look at the duration, number two. It says, for a moment, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment, light affliction, amen. The difficulty is light. For a moment, it's working for a more exceedingly eternal way to glory. Look at, look at, look at. If Paul could count his affliction as light, how much more can, should we look at our trials as afflictions of light? How much more? I'm going to repeat that again because of the point. How much more? It's light. But as it's become, as, as, it, as it's involved in being light, the duration tells us, again, we're surprised that he would say the trials lasted only for a moment. Paul's life was filled, brothers and sisters, with afflictions and turmoil and trouble. 
yet he still says his trials are short in duration. Time. The longevity of it. And Paul is right on course for he received life and he looked, he looked at life. Let me say it that way. He looked at life and he, he viewed life in, in terms of eternity. Not in terms of time only. He looked for it down the road, not for just, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, the, the temporal that you're going through. That's why he told in, in Philippians, he said, I press toward the mark of the high calling. Amen, amen. Pressing toward the mark of the high calling. Uh, a lot of those things of, of the past just to lay there. Amen. He, what did he tell us of the Corinthians also? Uh, as, behold, uh, as we become new creatures in Christ. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things, old things, old things, old things. The past will be, behold, all things become new. Our, our brothers and sisters, you got to let stuff go. Often it's temporal for a moment. Let me, let me press on. Paul is right on course. He's viewed life in terms of eternity, not in terms of time only. He looked beyond the here and the now to the future. And that's where we are. I can't say it enough. I might say it all the time because it's so true. If all we see is what you, we see, we would never see all that there is to be seen. It's more than what we see right now. December the 4th, December the 5th, amen, amen, uh, November the 25th, amen, is more than what we see right now. Paul was weighing the present trials against the future glory and discovered that the trials were actually working for him. Now let me put a pin there, that, that's maturity. Amen. That's... I, I don't know what the writer James says. He counted all joy when you fall into trials and temptations because the testing of your faith work is patience. Amen. But so you can be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. It's maturity. The testing of your faith work is patient. God is trying to work you to be patient and, and mature. That's not necessarily perfect. That's mature, lacking nothing because he wants you strong at the end of it all. Preach, my island. Paul was weighing the present trials against the future glory. And he discovered, and he discovered that. He discovered that. He discovered that. And he tells us that in Romans 8, 18, that it was working for his future glory. Now, here it is. We must not mistake this for a moment of, this moment for, uh, 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 of uh, discomfort to what I have coming in the future. That's what he says. We must not mistake this moment uh, 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 of discomfort now for what I have coming in the future. Because, because he tells us, uh, give us a word, uh, uh, the Bible gives us a word, excuse me, the Bible gives us a word, amen. Paul didn't write Hebrews, amen. He might have wrote some of it. We don't know who wrote the Hebrews, that Sunday school lesson, but a godly man wrote it. It, it tells us Hebrews 4, 16, let us come, therefore come boldly through the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Listen, God gives us the grace we need when we need it. That's where we get this from. He may not show up when you want him, but he's always on time. He's on time God. Yes, he did. Amen. Amen. Listen, God gives us the grace and that the, us the grace that we need when we need it. God can and does turn suffering into glory. Y'all can say amen to that. Oh yeah, he turns suffering, he turns, he turns suffering into glory, but he cannot turn sin into glory. Don't miss that. He cannot turn sin into glory. Sin must be judged. Because there is no glory in sin. Let me say that again. Sin must be judged because there is no glory in sin. Yeah. James said, James 4, 17, For he knows to do right and does not do it to him that is sin. Amen. There is no glory in sin. Now we must, we must not, let me, let, me, let me help you some more with this right here. We must not misunderstand uh, uh, this principle uh, and think we as Christians can live any way we can. Amen. Or any way we please and expect everything to turn out into glory in the end. 
What you're saying, Reverend Miles, I'm going to help you. No way. No way. You, you don't misunderstand that, that, that you can live any kind of way you live and God going to turn this what you're doing. No, no. Here it is. Paul is saying, Paul was writing about, stay with the text, stay with the sex. And sometimes everybody want to get ahead of what the text is saying. We talk about the text. Paul was writing about the trials he experienced in the will of God. And he was doing, and, and he, as he was doing the work of God. Let me say that he was in the will of God while he was doing the work of God. Not that you're doing things outside of your will and you want some glory outside of the will of God. Not doing the work of God, you ain't going to get no glory. So no glory is going to come from out of that. Doing the will of God, staying in the will of God, and doing the work of God, that's when glory is exposed and offered and given. Yeah. So that's why this duration, amen, uh, it will be, will leave us as we stand his will. And God's going to get the glory in the end. Now, let me say this. Thirdly, dividends, dividends. It tells us, see the way to glory, working for us, see the way to glory, verse 17. You know all this is in there, but it is. God bless you. Exceeding weight of glory. It says, work is for us. Yeah. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, the work of affliction for the believer is re rewarding. You can say amen to that. Afflictions bring blessings as we in the will of God, doing the work of God. That's why I gave it to you three times. The blessings are interestingly and instructively described as an eternal weight of glory. Y'all got it. There's both a comparison and contrast here between the affliction and the dividend. I'm going to give it to you again because you might not have got it then. There is both a comparison and a contrast here between the affliction and the dividend. We have a Sunday school now. The comparison is the fact that the afflictions and the dividends are both described as weight. The afflictions and the dividends are both described as weight. Paul could stay encouraged of his work for God because of what he knew was within his future. Preach Island. He saw his afflictions as light when comparing them to the glory and he would receive of what he would receive in heaven. The term weight of glory speaks of a set of scales. Afflictions are balanced on one end of eternal glory and we are to receive and, and, what, and, and we are to receive on the other end. Let me say that again. Afflictions are balanced on one end and the eternal glory we are to receive or on the other end. That's why it's light. Let me move on. Despite, I'm getting ready to close. Church family, despite how heavy, how thick, how loaded, how, how forceful, that's the way the afflictions are when the eternal glory is placed on the scales. The afflictions become light. Because the afflictions at work you thought were heavy, the eternal weight of glory is much heavier than your afflictions. Oh, Reverend Miley, preach this thing today. And the thing is, this thing is light, but you got more weight that's going to be on in, in your eternal weight of glory that you could ever imagine. What really matters, greater faith, church family, is what is eternal and permanent. What can, cannot be seen or, or measured only with the eyes of faith can we look at, at what cannot be seen and know that eternal weight of glory. God's love transformed the eternal weight of glory. The eternal weight of glory outweighs any affliction that can ever become upon us. God's eternal weight of glory do not weigh COVID-19, the, the pandemic, amen. And whatever's going on, whatever's happening in 2020 and 19, the eternal weight of glory. Whatever happened.
happened in your life, amen, and the affliction that you had in 1918, 16, 17, or 1999, that was right because the eternal way of glory, you balance it on the scales going our way there. What am I saying? I'm, I'm done here. May the Lord bless you real good. Know that the eternal glory of God's love transforms. What does it do? It transforms our burdens into blessings. It transforms our cares into comforts. It transforms our defeats into delights. It transforms our heartaches into hallelujahs. It transforms our problems into praises. It transforms our sorrows into songs. Oh yeah. It transforms our griefs into glory. When we reach eternity, our hearts will rejoice. Our, our lips will sing. Our faces will glow. Amen, somebody. Our burdens will be lifted. Our problems will be resolved. It's out. Our hearts will be gone. Our hearts will be healed. And we can fully capture the difficulty, the duration, and the dividends of our afflictions. Amen. There was one man. Yes, yes. Uh -huh, only one man that was afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was, was upon him. And with his stripes we're healed. Amen. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Yes. And his birthday is on the way. He was afflicted. He was he was worked over. saved right where you are. Through this virtual, through this video, through this YouTube, through this Facebook presentation, whatever you call it, through this sermon that the, this pastor, this reverend is just trying to proceed out just to help somebody today. You can come to Jesus right now. You can confess with your mouth or leave in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Lord Jesus from the dead, and you can be saved. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Who shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Because God, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him we might and can and shall be saved. There's one meeting between God and man. That's Jesus Christ. You can accept him today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now, just now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. He will save you. Is that one? He will save you. He will save you just now. Just now, oh, 
he will save you. He will save you just now. You can give your life to Christ right now and call me, call the pastor, call, get to some church that's preaching the true gospel. Amen. And be a member of somebody's church, someone's church. Amen. But you can receive Jesus, not by being a member of a church, but you need to be connected. Amen. But you accept Jesus Christ right now. If you die today, by you accepting him, amen, eternal way of glory will be given on your behalf. Amen. Praise be to God. We're not doing communion today. We will do that further down the road for Greater Faith Family that is wondering when we're going to do that. Hopefully and prayerfully, we will do that real soon. Amen. Because the Bible tells us often that you eat of this bread and drink that cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Then through tradition, this first Sunday, but it don't have to be on first Sunday. It's whenever we do it. So let's pray. We will, we will get it done. Amen. Real shortly. So we can stay connected as a body of believers. As a body of believers. God bless you. Prayerfully, something was said, something was taught today. So we can understand our afflictions. But just for a moment, our light afflictions. Because one day we will have eternal weight of glory. Do not look at the things which are you, you see because they are temporal. The things that appear. But look at the things that are unseen. May God bless you. May God keep you until next time. Stay safe. Stay safe and obedient. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for allowing us to hear the preach word, the talk word. We pray that someone that has come to Christ and understanding more so their afflictions and the turmoil that they have gone through. Trials. Amen. That they have gone through to help us to grow us stronger. Be with us in spirit and in truth as we continue on this week, as we have a safe week. This is your service prayer in Jesus' name we say, amen.